Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Thailand. Today, bioremediation stage three. That's right, it's finally here. The third and final stage of remediation, which is now gonna involve African nightcrawlers processing through the excrement waste that the black soldier fly larvae took care of, us, took care of for us back in stage two. Let's do it. So unfortunately, here in Thailand, I don't have big box stores available to me like Costco or Target to be able to walk into and take a look at the Rubbermaid bins to see what selection they have and you know buy something and bring it home. I have to order it online. Now back in the US, we have uh, Rubbermaid Roughnecks. Here in Asia, Rubbermaid has the Brute. It's a 14 gallon bin. I've never seen this configuration before. It's a really nice looking bin. It's it just it, a little bit larger than 10 gallon bins. I got three of them and I think I know what I can do to kind of manage this like a 10 gallon bin. So what I decided first for the configuration was that I'm going to stack all three in a water tub for safety for the worms. And then I immediately got to work on drilling the holes. Now I'm drilling these a little bit lower than I normally would. And the reason for that is because again, I want to try to manage it like a 10 gallon bin. So I went with four holes on the long side and two holes on the short side. Uh, this will give me the ability to have about nine inches worth of depth going straight down, which is more than enough room to collect castings. Cause I gotta tell you something, if you've ever kept bins like this before, they get heavy really, really quick. So this will work perfect for that purpose. So as you can see, there's a good nine inches of depth from the lowest drilled hole down, and that's more than enough space to collect castings with. I mean, a bin like this will get anywhere between 50 to 60 pounds at the end. And that's it for the setup. That's how it's going to roll. So now it's time for the fun stuff. <laughs> Here's my little hand crank and uh, paper and cardboard grinder. Ain't she cute? Yeah, I'm a... Uh, I wasn't really amused. This is the only thing I could find that could actually do something close to a cross cut, not even a micro cut. Everything else was just long strips. And I'm going with straight brown cardboard and brown paper. No inks, no dyes, no glossy stuff, no white paper, no colored paper, no newsprint, no mailers, just straight browns. Hey, listen, I'm trying to address a very specific problem. The last thing I want to do is introduce a new one. And, you know, frankly, it was long rainy season. I kept myself busy. So when it comes time to start cleaning the bins now, after you've done all your drill work, uh, please make sure you don't use any soap or any surfacants at all when you're doing this. Just use straight water. Uh, worms will repel from any type of soap. In fact, it's an old school trick we used to use about 10, 11 years ago in some of the original bins that I was setting up to take your hands, get them really good and soapy, and just run them on the outside of the lip of the bin um, if you wanted to, or if you needed to try to keep worms from escaping your bin. As soon as they come across soap, they repel. So just be really, really careful with that. Um, but as you can see, I'm just getting everything rinsed out and the water tub to the right of these bins, this is the thing that they're gonna be stacked up in. Now, again, the reason why I'm using this is here in Thailand, the ant is like the national animal. I mean, we've got so many ants here, it's, it's not even funny. And if I don't use this for protection, they will get into the worm bins and just absolutely wreak havoc. So this is gonna be the configuration for the worm bins to keep them safe. And that's what we're gonna go with. And now it's time to just get the bin set up. Now, I know they look really nice, but this is not what you want for your worms. This is just way, way too sterile. Worms are gonna need an environment that's loaded full of really good beneficial bacteria, microorganisms, things that will make their new home hospitable. Um, the gentleman who I'm getting my worms from in 10 days, uh, or actually nine days, I should say, uh, was keeping them outdoors, they're African night crawlers, and their food and their bedding were one and the same. It was cow and pig manure. So I want to try to come up with something that is definitely not only hospitable, um, but the minute that they arrive, it's as, you know, as close to their old environment as possible. But that's going to be a little difficult because they're going to be inside, they're going to be in cardboard, not manures. And so I've got to try to simulate something as far as the microbes go that'll make that happen. So add your bedding, wet it down, I do things in layers like this. It's, it's all going to mat down anyway, but this right here, this is one of the most important parts of it. This is the black leaf mold that I've made previous um, since earlier this year. And this is going to add the microbes that are necessary to the bin just to try to get things kickstarted. It's, it's not going to be everything that the worms need, but at least it's something. It's better than nothing. Um, you don't want to start your worms off in a sterile bin. They will just, uh, yeah, they won't be happy. It would be like putting you in a room with absolutely no furniture, with a bed, with no pillow and no blanket. So wet everything down, and once you get everything good and wet, uh, you're going to go ahead and you're going to get another cover just so it looks like all you have in there is brown cardboard. Now everything is contained in layers, 
and this way everything can kind of just settle in. Um, over time, you know, it, it really just depends. You can do this multiple ways. I find this to be just as effective as anybody who's like uh, paper towel or toilet paper rolls at the bottom to make tunnels. It all mats down eventually. So it just, it really depends on how you want to go with it. This is the way I do it. And now it's just time to put things away because tomorrow I've got something very, very special in mind for nutrients for the microbes. So the next morning um, I got up and I immediately started to make a banana tea. Now, this is really delicious. I mean, if you've never had it before, I'm not just trying to tote or promote, but I mean, you, uh, you can take bananas, uh, you can use the peels, you don't have to use the peels. You basically steep them in water for several hours and it is amazing with honey and cinnamon. Um, but today what I'm doing is I'm actually making this to go into the worm bins. And the reason is this contains a great deal of nutrients, magnesium, phosphorus, and vitamin B6. Uh, but there's also a very, there's actually a more important reason for why I'm doing this. And I'm using Thai bananas as opposed to the Cavendish one that you saw me uh, hold up first. Um, I need to get the bins to cycle and they have to go through both what's called a mesophilic and thermophilic cycle in order for the bins to really be ready. Now, the reason for that, and, and this is every worm bin, you guys, it doesn't matter if it's African night crawlers or what, each and every bin has to go through this type of cycling um, in order to, you know, be able to get the nutri or be able to get the microbes in there that are necessary. The mesophilic stage goes between 68 to 113 degrees and takes about one to two days. Whereas with the thermophilic stage, it also takes about one to two days, but it's 122 to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. It's really, really hot stuff. Now, this tea is just going to be worked in conjunction with the black leaf bolt that's currently over there. And so my hope is, you know, because I've got a few days, I've got a little over a week to go before my guy arrives with the worms, I should be able to get the mesophilic stage done with the banana tea. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slurry of about six different vegetables, really soft vegetables, put them through my food processor and use that to get to the thermophilic stage. I should be able to achieve both stages within about four to five days time, plenty of time before the worms arrive. So each bin received two cups of the banana tea. And uh, you don't have to go crazy with this. You just want to make sure that you get a good dampening amount in there. And then they also received one of the bananas. So that'll be just a little food source when the worms do eventually arrive that should be broken down by the time they get there. Covered up with some, you know, with some brown cardboard, just some bedding. And, you know, it's ready to go. Now I'm going to keep track of everything with my thermal um, gun, but uh, you know, everything should be, you know, in good shape. At least I thought it was. They're right down the corner. And that's what I get for still not learning how to speak Thai. Lost in translation again. We got our dates crossed. He thought I was needing the worms on the 3rd, even though I told him the 10th. And, um, you know, that's just the way it goes. I mean, I can't deny the delivery date because if I do, I may not be able to get them from him again. Um, we don't have the luxury here in Thailand to have worms delivered to us like from an online service. The carriers here are not allowed to deliver live animals. So Thai Post, DHL, carry service, they, they just don't, they don't do that. So the only option you have is to either meet somebody at the bus station in your town, or as this gentleman was kind enough to do, deliver them to your home. Now, as I'm looking at these worms, they don't look like African night crawlers to me, but Again, this is the first time I'm keeping them. I really don't know, but they don't have that purple bluish hue that they do, but they are long, they're big, and I can see their you know, exposed clitellum, so maybe they are. Regardless, I mean, he's using them for composting, so I have no reason to doubt that what he's saying is true. I'm gonna treat them like African night crawlers, and you know, I've just gotta get things moving. I don't have any time for lollygagging around at this point. I have to get them in the bins. So immediately what I did is I divvied everything up, a um, hundred each because he delivered 300 to me. Bin one received a hundred, bin two received a hundred, and also bin three received a hundred worms. So it's been about an hour since I, uh, since I put them in. They look to be settling in really nice. So I'm gonna just, like I said, I'm gonna leave the uh, lids off here for a little while. Just kind of give them a chance to get settled in and make sure they got plenty of oxygen. And then I'm going to put the covers on top of the bedding and I'm going to put them back in the water tub. And we are not going to check on these again for another nine days. Uh, we're going to check on them in the second Sunday of September and we will go from there. 
Now these bins are going to be really, really wet and with me putting a plastic cover over the top of the bedding, that's going to ensure that the condensation and the moisture stays down in the bedding instead of on the sides of on the top of the lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to put an additional layer of dry bedding back on top here and then I'm going to put my plastic piece in place. On. There we go. Plastic cover is in place. Help keep the moisture in. There'll be some dry spots in the corners and stuff because it's not perfect, but you know what? It's not bad either. And this is why it's so important to see both successes and failures, guys. Um, not everything is always going to go perfect every single time. So I'm going to ask you to hang in there with me and come along with me because this is hardly the end. It's just the beginning. I have something very, very special in mind that I hope you all are looking forward to. Do you like watching worm bin videos? Thanks so much for joining today. Whether you're one of my subscribers or not, thank you so much for tuning in. It really means a lot to me to help build this community up. Bioremediation is something we all really need to be practicing on our properties, whether we're gardeners or farmers, whether you start with BSFL, worms, or even just cover crops to help nutrient cycle your soil and collective contaminants, it's a really important aspect of every single garden. And this process has only just begun. And as such, and because of that, the special announcement is I am going to be launching a whole new playlist series known as Worm Bin Weekends. Starting this Friday, October 1st through Sunday, October 3rd, you're going to be getting three episodes every single weekend day this coming weekend. It's going to chronicle everything that's gone on during the month of September here. And then every following weekend, you're going to have one video each one of those days. It's dedicated to each one of the bins. Friday will be bin one, Saturday will be bin two, and Sunday's for bin three. I hope you'll tune in and I hope you'll enjoy. And I really, again, want to thank you for joining today. If you haven't already, please do like and share the video. Hit the um, subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. And definitely hit the notification bell so you can be alerted to the next time I upload new content. Until next time, wherever you are in this world today or tonight, take care. Bye for now.